Hey, hey, kings, what's poppin'? It's me, Jeems of Regret. So, anyone remember the utter mess that is Battlefield 5? I do. A failure of truly epic proportions, a slow motion train crash that people thought could never be topped, only to be absolutely eclipsed by the game that comes after. But let's not talk about 2042, I'm sure Big Fry and his cohorts have already published enough videos rightfully trashing 2042 to last us a lifetime. No. Today we're looking back at the mess that is Battlefield 5 because let's not mince words. It is a mess. It had a disappointing launch, followed suit by questionable balancing choices later down the line, live support that got cut short, and a core philosophy that honestly hurt the game more than helped it. DICE wanted players to experience a side of World War II forgotten by many, see events that are unseen, hear stories that are unheard. It's an interesting concept for a World War II shooter but immediately presents issues. Battlefield 5 is a AAA game targeting a wide, mostly casual, normie audience. Normies don't generally immerse themselves in consuming historical content. Their knowledge of World War II mostly comes from popular media, be it movies, documentaries, viral posts on the internet, or other games. They're not actively following channels like Indy Nidel's World War II Day by Day or religiously watching The Chieftain and Military History Visualized. Their view of World War II is formed by Saving Private Ryan, Fury, Hacksaw Ridge, Medal of Honor, and World at War. See the problem now? Not yet? Alright, let me explain further. DICE wants to sell a game about World War II to normies, but without big names like Normandy, Stalingrad, Kursk, Midway, Iwo Jima, and Dunkirk. You know, names that normies easily recognize and associate with the war. I know that Iwo Jima got added in a later update, but the inclusion of Iwo Jima just begs the question. Why other big name battles weren't included? Where is Okinawa? Where is Bastogne? If you're going to include one big name battle, then why not go all in? Then in an effort to appeal to the casual crowd, DICE adds historically inaccurate equipment, weapons, and gear and they make sweeping historical revisions that utterly ruin player immersion, thus ensuring that history enthusiasts aren't going to treat the game kindly. It's a World War II game that's supposed to be for everyone and yet appeals to no one. Now that's not to say the game isn't fun, it can be very fun. I have like, what, 80 hours of playtime on the multiplayer mode? When the whole game clicks, it's very fun. The problem is the game is not a very good World War II game. It feels like this weird alternate universe Earth where technology is years ahead but it's crammed into a World War II aesthetic. It just doesn't feel right. This is especially the case when you're trying to tell a story in World War II. However, that being said, the biggest flaws with Battlefield 5's campaigns isn't the metric shit ton of utter disrespect given to the source material. Though granted that is in major, major abundance, the campaign's greatest flaws are in its design. You see, every game sells you a fantasy. Stellaris offers you the fantasy of running a space empire. Skyrim offers you the fantasy of being the dragonborn of legend in an immersive open world ripe to explore. Battlefield then offers you the fantasy of being a soldier, one cog in the war machine, the role to play in a battle between armies. In a campaign, all of that is stripped away in favor of a generic Far Cry style mission pack. I have played very few campaigns that were so bad that it felt repulsive. Battlefield 5's campaign offerings win the honor of being the most repulsive so far. Apart from the identical control scheme, very few of the multiplayer modes magic and spectacle carry over. Instead of charging headfirst into gunfire, moving to and from cover, dodging tank shells and working together with your team, you're what, sneaking around, marking enemy units with your binoculars and doing stealth takedowns? Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, am I playing a Battlefield game or am I playing a shittier, stripped-down version of Far Cry? It doesn't help at all that the enemy AI basically has the inhuman ability to zero in on your position the moment you've been discovered by, like, ooh, just one guy. Grandpa, what was it like fighting the Germans in World War II? Hmm, yes, my boy. I remember when I was fighting in the Battle of the Bulge, this German sniper would shoot at me with pinpoint accuracy in the dead of night from hundreds and hundreds of feet away because one of his friends noticed me in the pitch black somehow and telepathically communicated my exact position. Yes, it is actually that bad, and it honestly just takes me out of the whole goddamn experience. 
See, in their quest to tell this supposedly deep, introspective, philosophical, untold stories, DICE forgot to make their campaigns fucking fun. Which is, you know, probably the main reason anybody plays a game at all. If I wanted to be regaled by historically inaccurate fiction masquerading as real stories from World War II without the benefit of fun gameplay to go along with it, I'd watch the fucking History Channel. To say that the war stories are an utter slog to get through is an extreme understatement. I have to repeatedly force myself to keep playing and not to just uninstall the game and abandon working on this video entirely. And even that failed eventually as I gave up on finishing most of them. I've had to repeatedly change the scope of this video from a full-on review of the war stories to... I know to whatever the fuck this video is going to end up as. It's, 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 it's just fucking horrible. Ja, Kommandant. Anton 1, ein Oberkommando, gehen jetzt in Position. Anton 1 geht jetzt in Position. Alles klar. Aufbruch. Jawohl, Kommandant.
And you know what? What what boggles my mind even further is that a good Battlefield style campaign experience was already done before. Seriously, the winning formula already exists. It's been done better before. Star Wars Battlefront 2 had a fantastic campaign. No, 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 not the one by DICE. I'm talking about the original one, the one that's actually well made. The original Battlefront 2 campaign managed to take the game's combined arms, class-based, army versus army gameplay and stitch it into an enjoyable single-player narrative. Pandemic Studios, another victim of EA, Lord rest that studio soul, managed to stick together a compelling and most importantly enjoyable single player campaign using its multiplayer mode. And all of this without having to resort to creating a gameplay loop entirely alien to the rest of the game. A smaller company with far inferior technology managed to outperform your higher budget, higher complexity game over 15 years ago. In the English lexicon, we call this phenomenon embarrassing. The original Battlefront 2 game came out in 2005. Since that year, there has been seven Battlefield games that released with campaign, and arguably only two of them were any good. And even then, I'd argue they're not exactly good Battlefield campaigns. Bad Company's campaigns were fun, sure, but they cut out a lot of the core Battlefield experience to do so. But fuck it, that's another issue for another time. It's just a damn fucking shame. DICE obviously has, or at the very least had, some very talented people working for them. If they could have turned that talent towards developing a campaign effectively, we could have had something really special. Now imagine, if you will, a different take on the War Stories formula. Instead of focusing on just one character per story, the game instead focuses on the struggles of an entire unit a la Band of Brothers. Make them fictional, make them real, doesn't really fucking matter. The story could be told through the eyes of an maybe unknown an embedded war photographer who keeps a journal handy. Without the need to have an action hero central character to revolve the story around, DICE wouldn't need to rejigger the entire gameplay loop for the sake of the campaign. Have each individual level set in a multiplayer map with each mission requiring the player to achieve different sets of objectives each time. It's a potential gold mine that DICE just left on the side of the road to create a campaign experience that legitimately feels like it would feel more at home in the Medal of Honor game than a Battlefield one. Sadly, if the way the series is going is any indication, we probably will never see this happen. Or have we already? An interesting question of course, but one that I'll save for another video. If you enjoyed watching this video, then remember to like and comment to help the algorithm share it to more people, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. This is Sheems of Regret, wishing you all good luck and Godspeed. Signing out.